Hello and welcome everybody. I want proper variant and today I want to talk about one of the rarest achievements in Crusader Kings 2. It is called History is in my blood and only 0.9% of all players in Crusader Kings to have it. Now, you need to have five historical bloodlines on your character. Usually this takes about, you know, five or six or maybe even seven generations because you need to get lucky. You need to, you know, do the matrilineal marriages right. What I will do in this video, I will explain to you how you can get it in 25 years or less. I think you can pull it off maybe in 20 if you get very lucky. It is the ideal start date. Let's just uh, jump right in. This video effectively is two parts. In the first part, I will only, you know, detail what you need to do to do this with as little hassle and RNG as possible. And only in the second part will I actually explain why exactly those steps are the steps of success and why this is, without a doubt, the easiest and the quickest way to get this achievement done. It usually takes five, six generations to actually get it through. And then there's so many other, you know, disturbances that might throw you off, not with this way that I suggest here. So, the perfect start date, obviously one of the most important parts of this, it is the 20th of June 1204. This is hugely important that you pick this specific date, not just the year, the date is important. And then you have to play as Castile. Uh, you know, why you will see in a second here, Castile starts in a very, very good position when it comes to the Bloodline game. And once you load it in as Castile, just take a look at, you know, your children, because those children will be hugely important to what we are going to do here. Your primary daughter already has some children from a previous marriage. Don't sweat about that. Is, uh, it is Berenguela. And what you want to do with her is just, you know, check out the bloodlines. You have two bloodlines here. You have Alienor and Alfonso, which is fairly unique, because uh, other than the Arp Huts, which we will take a look at right now, barely anybody, I, I, I believe I found like one or two other instances, has two bloodlines at the start of the game. Now, what if, you know, you just do 2 plus 2 instead of adding one bloodline every generation? That is exactly what we're going to do here by selecting the cousin of the current king of Hungary. His name is Geza, son of Geza. And you betroth that kid to your primary, to your firstborn daughter. Of course, matrilineally. Now, because he's not set to inherit anything, there is no question the AI doesn't care. If you want to be extra safe, you can betroth one of your other daughters to the youngest, uh, you know, brother of Geza, so that you can have a higher chance of actually getting those four bloodlines together immediately. Your other daughter go ahead and either marry or betroth them matrilineally to any random person that is young enough to give you children out of that marriage that already has a bloodline. For example, the Rory Keats come to mind. Um, you know, Richard the Lionheart has a, a bastard son that can be used for this as well. There's plenty of opportunities to go through with this and just make sure matrilineal marriages of your daughters to sons of, you know, people that have important bloodlines. The next part that is quite important is there will be a crusader, definitely join it, you know, obviously it gives you practically infinite money. And after that, make sure that you go ahead and change your succession law. Changing your succession law is absolutely crucial. You want to have it in elective. You can do this easily because your character, when you start out, has already ruled for longer than 10 years. So just change it to elective and then I'm voting for my sister here, don't sweat it. No, no, no. You want to vote for your firstborn da daughter. It should not be important immediately, but it will be. Why is elective so good? Well, I can already explain that. It's fairly simple. There are no dukes in your realm, meaning that you are the only elector. There's no risk attached to it at all, and you will always get the air that you really, really desire. After that is done, you are primarily set, and you can focus on winning the crusade. Now, you know, honestly, you obviously do not want any of your daughters to go off, so make sure that your beneficiary is not one of the daughters that is matrilineally married to one of the people that have a bloodline. And, you know, if you just have the time, just marry your daughters further and further and further to more people that have the bloodline, just as you saw right here. Uh, I started going for the crusade a bit early because, obviously, you know, I wasn't really interested in winning it, but I was interested in the money that comes with the crusade. You can see uh, I give myself and my heir, my primary daughter here, the Crusader trait. It really does not matter. I just, you know, in the in the moment, I was like, why wouldn't you do it, you know? At the end of the day, it does really nothing in your favor or against you, so do what you must. It does also, and I just want to point that out, not actually matter if your character, if the king dies, for example, in a battle, as long as your heir is your primary daughter. That matters the most because your primary daughter is in a position, uh, in a position of actually, you know, having the children that you need for the four bloodlines and then you only need one bloodline more. Now, this crusade will always be a victory and this means that it is guaranteed that you get a huge payout out of it. The AI of the Muslims cannot oppose this, they, they can't go against it and you just saw that in a very short glimpse. They just had a son, one of my daughters had a son with a Rurikid uh, who is now born and that is excellent, the earlier the better. And here's three bloodlines, the Rurikid bloodline and then Alfonso and Alien also, both of those uh, that we already had in the family. And that is usually important because, you know, he was born and he now has the possibility to become the partner of the future's child, uh, of the future child of my 
primary daughter. And that was a bit roundabout, but let me explain that in just a second. Once the crusade ends, there will be an important event. Now, uh, as for the crusade, obviously, you know, if you put yourself at risk, make sure your daughter is not at risk. That is important. Your primary daughter, don't do anything with her. Um, but yourself, you know, put yourself at risk. It's fine. You're going to play as your daughter sooner rather than later anyway, so don't even sweat it. Now, once you come home, you will notice that we have thousands and thousands of bucks. I just want to point out there is a real risk that the Muslims to your south will declare holy war on you, and you will be easily able to oppose them because you have two holy orders, the Knights of Santiago and the Knights of Calabria, I believe, um, as your vassals, meaning that you can always raise them, and you can always then, of course, also hire huge mercenaries. You should be able to fend off the Muslims. I was lucky here. I was not once attacked, but even if you are attacked, you know, this bank account is essentially what you need to survive for the rest of the playthrough. Now... What happens right here is hugely important. This is the point where you essentially say, we got it. I just, this is my granddaughter to my primary daughter, and this kid has four bloodlines. With four bloodlines, it is practically already done. All we need now is this kid to grow up and have a child with the other relative that I just, you know, gave, or no, I didn't give birth to them. My daughter gave birth to, uh, to the child that has the Ruru kid bloodline. There he is, Martin. And Martin will be matrilineally. Make sure it is matrilineal. I know it's the same family, but it is really important that it is actually matrilineal uh, as a marriage. So essentially, once you have children of your daughters, make sure that those children, if they are of different sex, are marrying in a matrilineal way. Matrilineal is hugely important, just for the record. Uh, that they are married matrilineally. You can do that at any point because they're all at your court. There's no issues whatsoever with it in terms of, you know, giving you trouble because somebody doesn't want a matrilineal, a matrilineal marriage. This simply does not happen with this method. Now, once they are married, you will be in a position of just waiting. That is all you need to do. And I just want to say that um, you can get unlucky, for example, if you only have sons, then obviously you can't intermarry the cousins yet again. So, you know, your grand children, yes, your grandchildren, you cannot intermarry them if they're all boys or all girls, but that is so, so unlikely to happen, since you have multiple marriages to other bloodlines uh, outside of the Arpad bloodline with your other daughters, it's it's very, very unlikely that you will end up with not being able to marry one of the ones that have four bloodlines to somebody that has, uh, you know, one of the additional, the fifth bloodline that you need. Now, with all that being said, I want to give you a quick overview as to why the start date is so perfect. This start date and the starting position in Castile is hugely, hugely perfect. There's nothing that even comes close. There's nothing comparable to it when you want to speedrun this achievement. And that is for very, <laughs> for multiple reasons. There's plenty of them. But one of the first ones, obviously, is that the Castilian family, in this case, starts out with two bloodlines of its own, which is rare enough, because the only other family that reliably has two bloodlines at the same time is the Arpad family. So both of them coming together here, and in a later start date, the Arpads will be gone because Pannonia returns and whatnot, but both of these coming together here is hugely important because then in one generation you can have four bloodlines in one person. It speeds everything up. Next to that, there are so many other things like, for example, of course, you start out with so many young daughters, your primary firstborn daughter only being back in your court and only being unmarried because, uh, historically speaking, until the 19th of June, 1204, she was with the King of Leon, which then the Pope said to, you know, he was essentially like, bros, you're so related, what are you doing? Your marriage ain't real, bro. And uh, she had to split from him yet again. This is the only reason that you have a daughter in your court that is at an age where she can give a child and then be old enough to essentially, you know, pass away right when her grandchild comes along, meaning that you can then immediately inherit as that grandchild with the five bloodlines, speeding everything up. The other thing that is hugely important here is that uh, Castile starts with absolute anatic succession, meaning that women inherit on the same ground as men, meaning that it is very easy for you to determine the right heir once you change to the elective government. If you go to the elective succession law, fear about absolutely nothing, because only dukes would be allowed to vote, and in this realm and in this start date, which makes it so great, there are no dukes in your realm. Nobody but you has a voice in this, meaning that your succession is 100% safe unless for some reason you were to decide that you wanted to create a duke, which would not be the smartest idea, but you could do that, I just want to mention that. But this start date is so ideal because you can change the succession law immediately since your king before you took over has ruled for more than 10 years. You just got to maybe bribe one or two counts. And then it is an anatic, abs uh, absolute anatic as well, and there's no duke to vote against you. Additionally, of course, with the start, uh, start date this late, the infinite money via the early crusade that they will immediately call, you know, in this case for uh, uh, Egypt, will make it so that you are protected against the Almohads to the south. Uh, they can attack you, you know, if you're unlucky, they will attack you. I didn't get attacked in this one. Uh, I was very, very lucky, I guess, to, to not be attacked right there. 
But they can attack you, and the money that you get from the Crusade makes it so that you will always be able to easily defend yourself. So don't worry about it, right? Don't even sweat it. Now, I just want to point out, you may get very, very unlucky again, you know, with uh, just boys or just girls, but it is so unlikely because you have so many daughters that you can matrilineally marry, and boom, here we go. So, right in a second, you will notice, you know what, actually, oh, there you go. Now, I, I forgot what this was about. So, in this one, I died, now I play her, and look at her, she's 42, I think. 42 means uh, her, chil her child grows up, then has a child, and she'll be about, you know, 50, 55, maybe, depends on when she got the child, I suppose. Uh, in this case, it is perfect, because her health will be low already when her grandchild is born, which will be the, you know, rumored five bloodlines child. Meaning that this is also a perfect start date, simply because your characters are of the exact right age to exactly die out once the five bloodline child is born. And there is no difficulty in making, you know, the inheritance happen, because we are in elective succession, yet again. Um, just to be uh, sure, you know, I mean, you are 42 years old, you're not going to die immediately, but make sure to vote for the direct daughter of your now primary uh, daughter that has taken over the throne. So, remember, we're now Berenguela, uh, she was known as La Grande, I believe, I, I looked her up on Wikipedia, and we're now her, daughter of Alfonso, our starting character, and make sure that you vote for her daughter or son, depending on what child she had. It does not actually matter, because the marriage that you will have afterwards, you know, even if she had a son, one of her sisters would have had a daughter, you could have had a matrilineal marriage, and then that child you can still vote for and get a proper heir out of. Now, she will finally be grown up, and as you can see here, I will immediately uh, create the marriage. There you are. So now, these two will marry. These two, you know, were already betrothed. Easy money. Now, it's literally just waiting for them having a child. And honestly, it just doesn't take that long. There's, you know, if you were a male right now, or if your child, for example, were a man, and then the cousin of that child were the daughter, uh, you know, the girl, so the other way around than it is uh, here in the video right now, you could, for example, um, kind of, you know, let's just say <laughs> you could persuade them to have a child, even though, of course, it would technically not be with your child. If, you know, if you, if you get my drift, don't worry if you don't, you don't need to do it, it's easy. What we're doing here is, is all you need to do. And she is pregnant. And now here comes the absolute miracle. In just, what, like 25 years? How, how deep are we, actually? Let me see. In just, yeah, 25 years, we have a child. That child is Martin with five bloodlines. The Rurikid being the fifth one, the other ones being the Arpads, and then, of course, Ali, uh, of course, Alienor and good old Alfonso. With that being done, start voting for the child. You're the only vote again, there's no risk. And then, do the classic stuff, you know, you get up your soldiers take a little bit of a boat trip. If you don't know this yet, if you are on the open ocean for too long, you will get scurvy. Make sure that you don't have a court physician. I think I mess up and I have a court physician. I send him off to the to a, to a holy order just because I need to get rid of him before he heals me. And then just, you know, sit on the ocean. That's really all you need to do. I think uh, Queen Berenguela here gets uh, gout before she gets scurvy, but then she also gets scurvy. And of course, it comes to it. You know, at some point, you just gotta go. She's 50 years of, a uh, of age, meaning that her health stats, her hidden health stats, are already a bit weaker. And uh, with all that sickness coming along, we will... There you go. He tried to heal me, and I was like, nah, dude, you're out of here. Sent to the Holy Order. With all that sickness, of course, you will then quickly inherit as your grandson, making it very, very easy, making it one of the quickest achievements, despite the huge challenge that usually comes with this. I've had a rebellion here, I didn't even have to actually intervene, I hired all these mercs and then I noticed my vassal just beat them up. Don't sweat it, because salvation is near, we have scurvy, we have everything, you know, just sitting on the oceans and... I mean, you know, what can I say? Essentially, here you go. Queen Berenguela is dead and Martin took over, as you can see, history is in my blood was earned right here and then. Uh, right there and then, and of course, fairly easy to do. You know, I hope that all of you will be able to pull this off. This is one of the most fun achievements because it's so intricate that once you got it, it's easy to do. Now, before I end this video, I obviously want to thank the members of the channel that make videos like this one possible, starting with the Barons, the Richest T, Snywolf, Sai, and Hermann, and of course, the wonderful Dukes, Eric, Lexo, and Benedict. Thank you so much for your support. It really is what keeps this channel going. If you also want to support the channel, then consider becoming a member as well by checking out the join button and the perks that you get, or by, you know, buying a Paradox Games via the Paradox affiliate link in the description. I get a little bit of share to no further cost for you. If you want to see any other achievements, if you have any particular achievements that you would like to see me do, then let me know in the comments.